Happy New Year, almost. By the way, that was Kurt Thompson, moi, on the new Sizzle Jazz flugelhorn. It's a gorgeous, beautiful horn, inside and out. And um, I've already kind of definitely me get out of the way because this camera's kind of funky. If I'm in the frame, it doesn't like to do close-ups. Hopefully you can see the sizzle jazz on the horn. That is the brand of this flugel. It's a beautiful horn. Beautiful, smooth, smooth valves. Hey, it's Kurt Thompson. And I wanted to give you three tips, maybe a bonus or two as well, to start the new year right. Or if you're watching this and it's in the middle of the year, maybe you're trying to start a new chapter in your life or turn over a new leaf and just begin anew, begin fresh. And uh, this is a couple of things that you could try. So number one, don't be intimidated. There is a psychology to playing just about any brass instrument, especially when it comes to trumpet. What makes trumpet different? Because you are going to be heard, ladies and gentlemen. You are going to be heard. I played all the brass instruments in various organizations, and when I screwed up on trombone or when I screwed up on tuba, um, no, not too many people cringed. Uh, you screw up on trumpet, above the staff, especially at the end of the song, everybody will hear it, everybody in the audience will hear it, and in people outside, it's, it's a whole different ball game. So there is a psychology to playing the brass instruments, especially when you are almost out there naked and you're playing trumpet. I mean, there's just, there's a psychology to it. And so here's my first tip. You have to break through the psychological barrier and the, the number one barrier I see for people wanting to improve their range and endurance is they don't ever try to test their limits with their range. That doesn't even seem logical, right? Someone that wants to get better, someone that wants to play higher, play with more power, play with better endurance. Um, yet it's like one of the number one things um, when I ask, hey, when's the last time that you tried to go for a double C? Or if it's a pro player, when's the last time that you really crunched down and tried to get that double E, that triple F sharp, that triple G? When was the last time? A lot of times either it's a, a nada or it's a no-go or they're scratching their head like, well, I think I did something last month. If you are intent and serious and motivated, you should know the answer to that right away. You should say, I did that today. Kurt, I just did that yesterday. Kurt, I just did that two days ago. You know exactly when you did that. Not, well, hmm, I believe sometime, maybe last month, I went for a, a high seat. No. So the reason people don't do that, they don't push their limits, is psychological. It's kind of intimidating to go up into the sky and maybe you've had bad experience before and you just don't like what happens. So your number one tip right now is to break past your psychological barrier. If you're watching this before you practice, get out your horn. And of course it's flugel for me, but uh, you know, usually I'm on my trumpet. So go ahead and get out whatever instrument that it is. It could even be tuba. It could be euphonium. And go ahead and then I want you to go ahead and play to your limit and push your limit beyond. So if you're on euphonium and you can always get up to E flat and F, but after that it gets really, really intimidating and you don't try to push it, I want you to go for the G, euphonium players. I want you to go for the A, okay? Trumpet players, if you get above the staff and you're good with high C and D and E flat and E, but doggone it, you don't want to go for that F because you know what happens. There's some pain involved. It doesn't sound good. Maybe it doesn't come out. Or maybe you don't want to go for the F sharp. Or maybe you don't want to go for that double G. Or whatever the case is. I mean, you could be higher or lower. You have to push yourself beyond your limits. And I would recommend at least once a week. Now, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're a, you know, a sixth grader 
or if you're a 60 year old professional struggle player, bone player, or whatever, at least once a week, get a little tough and say, okay, today is the day. I haven't tried to get, let's just say, I haven't tried to get a turbo players. I haven't tried to get that way on up above where um, uh, Tommy Dorsey got and um, I'm getting sentimental over you. You know the one I'm talking about, way on up there. Let today be the day. You're in your own practice room. No one's watching you. Break that psychological barrier and try it, okay? Work your way up and just try to push yourself beyond that limit. That is tip number one. Everybody can do that. I promise you, if you, you have 52 weeks coming up in 2020, that's 52 times for the year of 2020, you could try to push beyond your limits. What do you think is gonna happen after pushing beyond your limits 52 times? My guess is you're going to improve. My guess is that the limit that you push through will be the old limits because you'll be comfortable in that particular range. It's going to be an overall winner. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, articulation. Articulation. Try adding in five or 10 minutes at least every other day of some extra articulation. Quarter note equals 120. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, that's about 120, right? So, if you can't do that, put down where you're at. Are you at 116? Are you at 108? Are you at 92? Or if you're a, a whiz at classical music and maybe even an advanced or pro player, maybe you're way beyond 120, maybe you can single tongue at 132 or 138, write that down and try to best yourself every other day on single tongue. Add in K tongue, double tongue, reverse double tongue. Now you guys know what that is, right? Add in kata kata kata, kata 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 kata, right? Kata 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 kata. Add in that. How about your triple tongues? Tata kata kata kata, taka ta taka ta ta. How about kata ta kata ta kata ta kata ta? That's like a reverse triple tongue. Add in articulation. My point is, add in articulation. The worst offenders happen to be the professional jazz trumpet players. I've known a lot of you through my lifetime. Maybe even Sam Noto, a guy I played with a long, long time ago at the Royal York, the Royal York Hotel in Toronto. Maybe he might even agree to this, that the professional jazz trumpet player is lacking sometimes when it comes to articulation. I mean, really buckling down and working on your articulation. Why would that be? Well, come on, enjoy spring, um, brownie speaks, and then all the other jazz standards, you know, all the things you are, and on and on and on, Green Dolphin Street. You're not really doing lots of triple tongue and double tongue, you know, in those type of songs for the jazz trumpeter. I'm here to tell you, jazz trumpeters and everybody else, if you would just add in some articulation, at least five or 10 minutes every other day, by the end of 2020 or whatever year you're watching this video, give yourself a year, you're going to be overjoyed as to what happens with your playing. You're just going to have more command of your instrument. I believe you're going to have an improved sound, a more crystal clear pinpointed attack. And who knows, you might even increase your upper register just a little bit. At the very least, you're going to have just a lot more colors and a lot more pops when you go to play your instrument, especially you pro jazz players. You're going to be able to put a little bit more pops a little bit more sizzle on those different notes that you want to get. So that's my tip number two. Add in five to ten minutes of articulation in addition to what you already do um, every other day, at least five or ten minutes every other day. Now for you classical only players, um, maybe you can dilute that down because you maybe you already spend an hour on what I'm just talking about now and I'm not telling people to spend an hour on it but if, if you're a classical person and that's all you do then um, you maybe you have to substitute something else. Maybe for you, you have to um, add in five or 10 minutes of lip trills, for example, or five or 10 minutes of some other part of the instrument that you um, tend to put on the back burner. Tip number three, at least once a week, turn one of your practice days into piano,
or pianissimo for everything. You're not going to be doing a concert. You're not going to be going to a jam. You want this to, day to be a day where you don't have any other distractions and you can just play your normal stuff, whether you practice an hour a day or three hours a day. Turn everything into piano or pianissimo. That means when you're doing your range study and you're supposed to be powering it out, because it's going to be your pianissimo day. Now, too bad you couldn't be in the room with me because that was probably two Ps, maybe almost three Ps for a high concert B flat, a high C. So make one day per week that's going to give you 52 times between now and the end of 2020 or whatever year you're watching this, 52 times of really helping this, helping your chops vibrate better, better flexibility and getting that response coming in. You need that. We brass players need that response to happen. I promise you, I promise you if you do this 52 times, over the next year, you are going to want to come shake my hand. Thank you, Kurt. Wow. Thank you. And you can do it and you're not adding any extra time to your practice regimen, right? You are taking what you normally would already do. You're already going to practice this particular set, for example, on a Saturday. Maybe you're practicing two hours on a Saturday and you don't have anything else going on. So I'm not asking you to add anything. You already are practicing. I'm saying I want you to turn down the volume. Turn it all the way down to about piano. You can barely hear me. You're on piano, maybe piano somewhere. You're going to keep your practice about that soft all the time, very soft. Okay, and then the next day you can turn it back up to normal how you would normally practice. So there you have three tips. What are they? They are all things that you can do, and you don't need to buy anything. You don't need to find another teacher for this, and it's just easy. What was the first one? Do you remember? It's about this, about the brain. Don't be intimidated by your instrument. Trombone players, I'm getting sentimental over you. Don't be scared to get up to that super duper way, way above the staff. Don't be scared. I know you probably can't play that note, but I want you to have the psychological mindset to work your way up there. At least break through those barriers. Don't be intimidated by those notes. Same goes for all other brass instruments. What was tip number two? Articulation. Add in five or ten minutes of articulation at least every other day. At least every other day. I promise you by the end of the year you are going to thank me. You're going to be a much better player. You're going to feel better. Probably will have increased your range a little bit. You're just going to be an overall better player. Especially the people who tend to really need this. The pro jazz trumpet player. Pro jazz trumpet players might need it, but they tend to do a lot of articulation with their doodle tongue. Pro trombone players tend to have a lot more action going on with their articulation than your typical pro jazz trumpet players. So you guys need to add in this tip number two, your articulation, five to 10 minutes. Get out the old Arbitz book, or if you don't have a book, you could just uh, work on scales, right? five or ten minutes of that every day.
What was that third tip? I said to turn down the volume where you really can't be heard that much down to piano, beyond the piano, pianissimo, play softly. Play softly. I'm trying to be exaggerated here, but I want you to play softly one day per week. You don't have to change anything about your practice except for this, turn down the volume. Play everything normal, whether you do jazz standards or whether you're working on orchestral excerpts, uh, band music, whatever the case is, your scales and your warm up and your long tones and sight reading and on and on and on. But I want you to turn down the volume all the way down to P or pianissimo, two P's. Maybe you can get it down to pianissimo. That's triple pianissimo for you guys who don't understand my version of Italian. You start your year with those three tips. I'm just going to guarantee and bet you are going to be a better brass musician. And I don't care if I'm looking at somebody who's 60 years old and has been a pro player for 40 years, or if I'm looking at somebody who's 15 years old and still just trying to figure out their instrument, the three tips that I told you right now are going to help you out. Take it from me, Kurt Thompson, guaranteed. Now how about a bonus tip? All right, this is a little bit of personal information about me, but you might be wondering why I'm dressed like this. Well, I just got back from doing a wedding reception. And yeah, you're thinking, wow, wedding reception at the end of December, why? Don't ask me why, I don't know. People like to get married at all kinds of interesting times. I guess, I guess now is not a bad time to get married because if you think about it, um, going forward for your anniversaries, a lot of times you'll have off, um, for your job, whatever, or school. I mean, you're gonna have off or kind of around this time, the holidays. And then if you're married, you could celebrate your anniversary kind of more easy, right? So I guess it's not a bad time. Now I could still be at that wedding reception right now, drinking, getting my drunk on and um, a bunch of other stuff, but I'm not. What am I doing? I'm having a little bit of this. I don't know if you can see in there without me spilling it. Can you see? Yeah. A little bit of coffee and what am I having here? Protein shake. Ah. Seems a little bit, little bit cliche, doesn't it? Well, it was just um, several years ago that I wouldn't be home right now. I'd still either be at the gig or at the reception or if that didn't last long, out to a bar, out to somebody's house, somewhere to continue drinking. And if not, if there was no gig, I probably would have a steel reserve, something hardcore, um, hurricane, steel reserve in this hand, a big 40. And I wouldn't have a protein shake or coffee. I'd uh, be waiting for the Domino's guy to deliver a pizza. And so uh, I had developed some pretty bad habits being a professional musician, a full-time pro professional musician. Now this is a topic for another conversation, but let's just make it clear. Being a full-time professional musician does not mean you work at Best Buy during the day and then you play a jam or something at night. It doesn't mean that you sit at home and mess around while your wife is a realtor bringing in the money or your wife is a teacher or an insurance agent. That is not a full, you have no skin in the game because you got it on easy street. I'm talking about you full-time musicians where everything depends on you playing this instrument or another one close to it. And you don't play this, you don't eat. Okay, there's no easy street. You, ha you haven't gotten married or you haven't have a, the luxury of a girlfriend that's a realtor, you know? And she's out actually making, or could be he if you're a female player, but I'm just gonna use he's for right now. Um, you're a he and she's out there selling houses and you're on easy street. That's not what I'm talking about. When you are a full-time musician, you get as many gigs as you can. Come hell or high water, they could be good ones, they could be bad ones. The number one thing that happens, I will tell you if you're a real pro player, and also I'm not talking about university and college trumpet instructors and brass instructors, you are not a full-time pro player. You're a teacher who happens to maybe play a couple of gigs. You have somebody holding your hand with that paycheck. That doesn't count. I'm talking about a real pro player that doesn't play, doesn't eat. There's a huge difference in that world. 
And what happens when, when you are a pro player, you tend to want to get all your compensation. What is your compensation? It's going to be usually cash or a check at the gig. It's going to be a dinner voucher or some kind of free food. And it's going to be almost always alcohol and drink, um, drink tokens that you're going to get or accommodate or a voucher or something like that. As a result, you can find yourself, if you've been a pro musician like I have a very long time, you can find yourself really having to develop some bad habits, uh, being on lots of gigs where you get your cash, you get your money, you get your free dinner or lunch or whatever it is, but, but damn it, you're going to take advantage of um, that alcohol because it's part of your compensation. Uh, you're going to drink those four or five beers or those four or five or six shots. They might even give you more. A lot of times they give the band more or that bottle of champagne. So uh, it can be a pretty overwhelming and insidious uh, bad, habit, bad habit that develops as a result of being a full-time pro player that isn't able to depend on anybody else for their income. When you're on the bandstand and you're in between sets, it's not likely you're going to be offered a protein shake. Yeah, maybe you can get coffee, but uh, most, most players that I've played with aren't going to grab a cup of coffee at midnight on that 10, 10 or 15 minute break in the set. They're going to get a beer or wine or something like that. And you're not going to get a protein shake. You're going to get some kind of chicken wings, fried mushrooms, fried cheese sticks or something like that. So it's insidious. If you're a full-time pro player, you're going to have developed these bad habits and sometimes it's like just like an 800 pounder gorilla that's tough to get off your back. A couple of years back I made these changes. Uh, it was very tough and now I'm home early. I could still be out partying up and going crazy but I'm home early and I'm having a protein shake which I'm getting ready to indulge in right when I shut this camera off and I got a little bit of coffee left. So that's kind of like my bonus tip for you guys. I feel like my um, playing has improved over the last couple of years just by doing that. But I've even gotten my health a little bit better. My health is a little bit better. Blood pressure is down, stronger, slimmer, all by getting rid of some of those old bad habits that developed uh, being a pro musician for so long. The kind of pro musician I just gave a definition to. You don't have a day job. You don't have a teaching gig during the day and you don't have a wife or a husband who's an insurance or realtor bringing home the bacon so you can just do whatever. You have to get out there and play. That's how I define a 100% full-time pro musician. Anyway, that was my bonus tip. Well, I'm going to be taking a detour off my normal status quo of playing and making videos and stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to really be getting into jazz trumpet and I'll tell you more about that soon. So Happy New Year 2020, Kurt Thompson. Take a visit to my site trumpetsizzle.com. You could hit the like button, you could leave a comment below, and you could subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye bye.